It's Lush Daddy. You feel me? I'm the nutsack that this game was birthed out of. You feel me? No, what's up, man? It's Lush. How y'all doing? So set the scene. Uh, where are we and what are you doing here today? Man, we are out here in lovely Beverly Hills, California, where I am um, fortunate enough to work every day at Film On Networks to develop battle rap and hip hop related content um, for television, the internet, and beyond. We're currently on um, Dish Network, but within the end of the month, we'll be on DirecTV and Time Warner Cable as well. What's your current vision for what you want to do with battle rap? Well, I mean, to, to preserve the integrity of it as it moves forward into this more corporate realm and generation and to make sure that like the essence of what people find exciting and engaging about battle rap is preserved as we, you know, as we continue to gloss up the presentation. What is that essence? The essence is pretty much that of lyricism. Without bars, nothing else means anything. This is the competition of who are the forefront of the the masters of the art of lyricism and emceeing. So anything else that really goes on don't matter as far as everything I'm talking about from behind the scenes business to, you know, the way people look or any, uh, none of that shit matters. If, if the bars aren't there and it doesn't, if it doesn't have the same things, elements that at its core made me excited 15, 20 years ago to get involved in this shit, then it's not real. So I'm here to preserve that. Because if it wasn't for a cat like me in this situation, y'all might not think that I'm the most qualified. Y'all might think it should be somebody else. Believe you me, it would be, be Parappa the Rapper. You feel me? You, you'd, have, you'd have cartoon chihuahuas battling. <laughs> so you talked about uh, the glossiness of the presentation. Uh, that was one of the things, uh, you're working on kind of two major projects right now. You've got uh, The Road to Ether, which explains a story, uh, documentary style, of what happened with the Ether event uh, in last December. And you've also got Ether Weekly, which is kind of a, explain what it is exactly. Well, Ether Weekly is a talk show that pretty much uh, focuses on hip hop, battle rap, and pop culture trends. It's nowhere near in the same vein as already existing awesome shows like the Dirtbag Dan Show and things like that. This is more for a more casual audience and trying to kind of integrate them to understand what's going on and touching on other elements because you know we've had guests like Busy Bone, Silk the Shocker, you know, Trey D from the East Siders. We've expanded way more beyond just mm. battle rap. The, when it dropped though... It's a West Coast thing. The, the glossiness of the presentation is often uh, what a lot of the purists, you know, on the forums and in the Facebook groups, uh, were really uh, had a problem with was the presentation of it. Right. Um, you know, are you listening to to what they're saying? Do you does it matter to you what they're saying? Well, at the it? end of the day, nine times out of ten, they have the same opinion that I do. It's just a matter of conveying that to a corporate audience and getting all the corporate people on the same wavelength because sometimes they don't really get it right away. Like, look, man, I you know, there's a one in my name. I'm from West LA, I came from graffiti, you know what I'm saying? So I know what toy tag, MS paint font looks like, you know what I mean? And I know what actual graffiti art is and it's not something I ever want to exploit. So I understand, but, but, but it takes time for corporate minds to really, you know, get on the same level as the people that they're putting in the position to try to make them hip or cool or within the proper context so that's why hell yeah beyond the beyond the fact that i'm listening i already know you feel me and i feel the same way how, how long of a runway do you have with this because it feels like uh, over time it's it's gotten glossier it's gotten better you've gotten bigger guests um and you're kind of finding your legs uh with this uh, do you have a lot of time to to kind of take have it have the aircraft craft take off uh the runway? There's no time whatsoever. We never even had time. Everything we've been doing has been working on a schedule. It's like a lot of this thing comes be, is due to like 
corporate and essentially, you know, the big homie Alki saying this is what he wants to do. And I know what tools they have over here as far as a distribution label. I know as far as a, a television network. So I know how to express myself creatively and get our, you know, the battle rap movement represented within that context. And I have to kind of meet between the middle of our vision. When I say us, I mean battle rap culture and what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Like, and oftentimes that in itself is a struggle. Uh, tell me about the distribution deal with Chief Keith. So, um, shout out to uh, the homie Uncle Ro and Glory Boys Entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been uh, an out a big outspoken um, representative of the Chicago rap scene, and I know that I feel like it's some of the most authentic and cutting edge as far as, you know, the reality of the streets and how that's conveyed. And it's a much different vein than battle rap, but it still, you know, has the same rawness to it. So we're in the process of uh, negotiating a huge deal, which encompasses music videos and uh, distribution and a lot more. I can't speak on it too much, but shout out to Glory Boys, ENT, uh, Chief Keith. The homie Tato, ball out, you know what I'm saying? The homie Flashy, the homie, the homie Mike, you feel me? Like, you know, it's 300.